Okay, so hi everyone, Owen here. So I got this interesting question from you, right? Why the modulus of x must be smaller than 1 for binomial expansion to be valid? So I think there is a misconception here, but before we start anything, bear in mind that binomial expansion allows us to work out an approximate or sometimes true value of a certain number, right? So this is a form of binomial here. You have a plus b brackets to the power of n. Either a or b is fine to take any number if n is a positive integer value. This is because there is a limit to the expansion as ncr is used, right? So you go from nc1, nc2, nc3, and so on to determine the coefficient of each terms and stop at ncn. Right, so there is this limit here to this expansion. Okay, so let's say you take a is equal to 1, b equals to 2, and n is equal to 3. Okay, so 1 plus 2 bracket to the power of 3. That gives us 3 to the power of 3, which is 27. Now you do the binomial expansion out, and then you add them all up, and that gives you 27, which is true. Okay, however, if you include decimals and negative value of n, Binomial expansion only allows you to approximate a value to a certain degree of accuracy. You can see that each term has uh, increased by one degree and it goes on and on up to infinity. This is because uh, if you use decimals and negative value, the coefficient of your term will never hit zero. You can try it yourself, right? So some form of convergence is needed for this uh, expansion to be valid. That is where we limit a is equal to 1 and b is some sort of x where the modulus of x is less than 1. Right, so if x is greater than 1, which you see later, your series will diverge, right? So the numbers will get bigger and bigger as you add them up. So it is also important to know that for a given a to the power of x, right? If a is less than 1, each value will getting smaller and smaller as you increase the x. Okay, when a is equal to 1, you can see that it will always be 1 regardless of x, right? However, if you start increase a to be greater than 1, the value will increase exponentially with the increase of x. Okay, take the inverse of 1 plus x for example, right here. So 1 plus x bracket to the power of negative 1. You plug it in, expand it all out, you get 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the power of 4 and so on and so on, right? Okay, and let's take x equals to 2, right? So uh, taking x equals to 2 gives us the inverse of 3, which is uh, 3 to the power of minus 1, which gives us 1 third or 0 0.3333333333 and so on. However, if you use binomial to do it, each term will be an integer, right? So 1 is an integer, negative 2 is an integer, 4 is an integer, negative 8 is an integer, and so on. And each term will get numerically bigger. Hence, it will not converge to 1 third or 0 0.3333333 and so on, right? Same with x is equal to 1. x also cannot take 1 because taking 1 will give us an inverse of 2, which the true value is 0 0.5, but the expansion switch between 1 and 0. Okay, next we look at uh, the inverse of 1 half or 1 plus 0 0.5 bracket to the power of negative 1. Same expansion. Now the true value of this is 2 thirds or 0 0.6666666 and so on. Okay, so if we substitute 0 0.5 into our expansion, you can see each term is getting smaller and smaller, and the value is getting closer and closer to the true value, right? So adding the first five terms gives you 0 0.6875. The first seven terms gives you 0 0.671875. It's even closer to two thirds. And the first nine value will give you 0 0.66796. Well, it's not exact, but 
is a very close approximate. Okay, so in conclusion, binomial expansion allows us to approximate certain value without the calculator. And for that to occur, certain convergence is needed. And for convergence is needed, each terms need to get smaller and smaller. And for that to occur, modulus of x should be less than 1. Right. And that's it. Thank you.